I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. Today I want to talk to you about our new Grow Light Calculator. It's part of the new Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. You can get there right here off our homepage. We also have a drop down menu with the Grow Light Guide. Let's go to the Grow Light Guide main page here. You know, the Grow Light market and the internet are full of conflicting and confusing claims about Grow Lights. It can be difficult to tell the difference between science, bro science, personal opinion, and marketing tactics. And at Cocoa for Cannabis, our goal, our mission, is to help growers maximize the success of their cannabis crops by providing scientifically accurate information. So we created this Grow Light Guide with the goals to demystify Grow Light metrics, to share reliable Grow Light data, and to empower home growers to make the best decisions about Grow Lights. So here's our Grow Light main landing page. We have our test reports, we have articles, the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide here. It's an independent, it's unsponsored resource, and it's a resource for growers. My partner, Dr. Photon, and I put this together largely. We started to collaborate with Shane Torpy from Migro Lighting. You know, Shane's earned a, a well-earned reputation for doing fair and accurate grow light testing. He shared his data with us, and we've been able to load some of those test reports. You know, and together, we're going to go forward and conduct independent grow light field testing. And in this guide, we've put together our test reports for different fixtures. And we have a series of articles about how all of this works. We have our grow light metrics primer, our grow light testing protocol, really explain how we go through our testing. And today I'm going to talk to you about our grow light calculator. If you've ever tried to compare different grow lights online, you know how confusing the data and the metrics can be. Many manufacturers use data deceptively and try to make their lights appear far more powerful than they actually are. So we developed our Grow Light Calculator to provide a scientific way to analyze and to also compare different Grow Light fixtures. We actually have two calculators, as you see here. One where you can enter your own data. You can enter your own power draw, cost, and PPF data. And one with preloaded data, where we provide data either from our, our field tests or estimates from the manufacturer's data using our formulas. Both of our calculators use photosynthetic photon flux, PPF data, uh, to calculate both the efficiency and to estimate the coverage and the harvest potential from different grow lights. So you see, here's the Mars Hydro TS-1000. We measured this, Shane did a test and actually measured this to be 242 micromoles of photosynthetic photon flux. And we use that 242 micromole number to be able to calculate the, the coverage of this fixture, which we show at 3.7, just about four square feet, and then the harvest potential up to about 182 gram. Um, this provides an interesting sort of look back at the old gram per watt rule. This is a fixture that gets 146 watts. Getting 146 grams on a harvest used to be sort of the benchmark. Using PPF, we've created a new benchmark formula. And we say for this fixture, really, you should get 182 grams. But that shows you sort of what you get from getting a more efficient fixture like that. If you're interested in understanding more about how we do these calculations, we make everything very available and very transparent behind our calculator. I'll scroll down here. You'll see some of the things that I'm, I'll explain in a second. More information about the grow light. But here's our basic links. So this link here to calculating grow light data, it takes you through our whole article about how we make these different calculations. So why we use PPF to analyze grow lights. I'll talk about the difference between calculated total and usable PPF, but how we calculate efficiency, our efficiency ranges, how we calculate coverage, a couple of thoughts about the difference between vegetative and flowering coverage. And we talk about how to estimate harvest and the old gram per watt rule and all of this. So if you're interested in really understanding where those numbers come from, how we get them and all of that, we provide all of that in that article. If you know at this point, it's a good point to stop and also point out our Grow Light Metrics Primer. In this article, we explain all the different metrics that you're going to need to be able to understand what's going on in the Grow Light Calculator. I think it's particularly the usable PPF, which is the number of photons that actually arrive to the canopy of the plants, 
and the total PPF, which is just every single photon that leaves the fixture. There's actually three kinds of PPF data that you need to understand in order to really make sense out of the grow light calculator. There's calculated PPF, and this is just when the manufacturer calculates how much their light will be able to produce based on the known efficiency of the diodes that they use. However, there's various reasons you won't get all of that efficiency in the actual light. And we've analyzed dozens of fixtures from different manufacturers, and those calculated values are typically almost 20% higher than total PPF. Now, total PPF as I mentioned, is every single photon that leaves the fixture. Lights are placed in an integrating sphere, and that integrating sphere does an excellent job of capturing and counting all of the photons. When manufacturers provide tested data, it's almost always the total PPF data. However, some of those photons are lost. Some of those photons are lost to reflection or to overspill. What we really care about as growers is the usable PPF. And the usable PPF refers to those photons that actually reach the canopy. And we account for reflective losses out of the grow tent. And this is the number that we really care about. So this is the number that we use in our grow light calculator. We can start with calculated or total PPF, but our calculator estimates usable PPF. You could also start with usable PPF, as I'll show you in a second. But it's important to understand those, and why we're, we're choosing to use usable PPF as our metric is because it's the metric that actually counts the photons that matter. So if you start with calculated PPF, our calculator will adjust it down. If you start with total PPF, our calculator will adjust it down by a smaller amount. And we also give you the option of using usable PPF and not adjusting it down at all. In the primer here, we cover some of the other metrics. We talk about photosynthetically active radiation, lumens and lux, micromoles, um, all of this stuff about PPF that I just covered, photosynthetic flux density. This is a measure of the density of the photons. It doesn't describe the actual number of photons. Hopefully you can see that sort of with this diagram. So we can't use photosynthetic photon flux density in the calculator. We actually need to get PPF, which is a count of the number of photons. All right, so getting back into our calculator here, um, you know, with high intensity discharge lights, such as high pressure sodium, HPS, or, or CMH lights, the ceramic metal halide, it became common to simply use wattage to determine how much light you need for your grow tent. When LED grow lights came into the market, many manufacturers tried to sell their lights by claiming an HPS equivalency. And since HPS lights were traditionally measured in terms of watts, LED lights have been marketed with an equivalent wattage. However, there's never been a standardized way to make these equivalencies. Each manufacturer comes up with their own metrics to establish them, and most of them are really gross exaggerations. So we advise you to completely disregard the manufacturer's claims about HPS equivalency or equivalent wattage. Wattage was never the correct way to measure things like coverage or harvest potential of a grow light. It works with HID lights because the, the HID lights like HPS and, and CMH convert electricity into usable light at about the same rate. However, LED grow lights can now be significantly more efficient than HID lights. So the wattage rules no longer apply for most home growers. Now, our calculator does still use wattage data. It uses wattage to calculate the photon efficiency. And the photon efficiency is the, the amount of light, which is the, the number of usable photons, the usable PPF, the 242, divided by the, the watts to get the, the photon efficiency, which is a measurement of how effectively the fixture converts electricity into usable light. Our calculator allows you to look up the cost. So you can plug this in. We can go to the Mars Hydro website here. And you'll see the purchase cost for this unit is $130. So we'll go back to our calculator and we'll throw in $130. And you'll see it will give us a cost efficiency rating now.
that 54 cents per micromole is really a, an industry leading cost for a high efficiency fixture. And that's one of the reasons the Mars Hydro TS-1000 gets sort of uh, pre-populated in this calculator. We're looking at the Mars Hydro TS-1000 here. You can swap that out. You'll see our little icons here. This is our field tested fixtures. And these are the fixtures that we specifically recommend. You can compare this to, for example, the Bava Green 240 watt. This is a larger fixture. It draws 258 watts, more or less. Generates 513 micromoles of usable PPF. And, you know, almost 2.0 micromoles per watt. Uh, if you compare this to you know, an uh, HPS fixture. We only have one HPS fixture loaded so far. I'll load some more, but this comes from a, a test, a, a measured test where the 600 watt HPS single ended got 777.6 micromoles drawing 638 watts for only 1.22. So you can see just how much more efficient and, and for example, the Mammoth 10 bar fixture is a larger fixture still, 1682 micromoles, but at 2.12 micromoles per watt. You could look at, um, a lot of other fixtures. The, the Bava Green here, which we've tested, like I said, 513, you can compare that. It's very similar, actually, in shape and coverage to the Mars Hydro TSL 2000. Um, and, you know, you can look up the prices for these fixtures, which I'd always give you as many different links and options to places to buy this as possible. For the Mars Hydro fixtures, they're definitely the cheapest on their own website. So $250 for this one. Let's see what the 250 comes out to just 52 cents per micromole here. All right, let me talk a little bit about how you can use this other calculator. If you come in with your own light fixture and your own data, not one of the ones that we've already loaded, you can enter data about any grow light in this other calculator here. But in order to get accurate calculations, you need to understand the, the photosynthetic photon flux data that you're planning to enter. So I'll give you an example of how this one works. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use the manufacturer's reported data from the Mars Hydro TS-1000. So we try to provide this as well as our calculations. And let's just see how this would work. They say it gets 150 watts and that it produces a total photosynthetic photon flux of 330 micromoles. And you can see that generates a 2.2 efficiency rating, which is right in the range of their 2.1 to 2.35 published efficiency rating range. Now, this is a calculated what they're publishing here are calculated photosynthetic photon flux numbers. And our calculator gives you the option to select that. We default to calculated PPF because that's what most manufacturers provide. However, you could also use total PPF if it's done from the integrated sphere testing or usable PPF if you're using field measurement data that actually measures the number of photons that hit the canopy. But this Mars data is calculated data, and you can see that using the calculated PPF conversion from the Mars data gives us 242 micromoles, which is almost exactly what was measured in the field test. And that's this conversion. Now, if we had put this in and said this was total PPF, it would say that the estimated PPF was higher than that because the total PPF is an actual measurement. And we said if we measured 330, that must mean there's more light there than if we just use the calculated values. If we said this was usable PPF, then our calculator doesn't make any adjustments in estimating the usable PPF. But we know that this is calculated PPF, and we can see that quite clearly by the comparison to the, the field measured test. So the 242, and that gives us the photon efficiency of 1.61. It's a little bit lower than the 1.65 over here, and that's mainly due to the difference in measured wattage in what they publish for watts and what we actually recorded in our test. 
For either of them, we could put in the 130 cost, and that gets to 54 cents again, just as it would on this side. When we do the 130, we get 54 cents. So now if you came in with other data, you want to make sure that you're entering the right kind of data here, the right 330 or the 220. You can enter either one of these. If you put 1.5 here, that changes everything. This would be a really bad light if it was calculated at 1.5. Let me take you to a couple of different manufacturers' websites and let's look and see where you get that data that you need for this because it depends on entering the right kind of data here. Either the photosynthetic photon flux, which is denoted with micromoles or micromoles per second, or the photosynthetic photon flux efficiency, the PPE, which is going to be a number like 2.0 to 3.0. Most manufacturers are publishing these days. Um, even though they're slightly overstated, you can see the calculator adjusts for that. All right, so let's clear this data. And I'll show you how to go and get data and sort of what data you need to get if you want to enter your own data. So I'm going to go to the LED Grow Light Depot product page for just an example light, the Cresser Lighting Panther X. It costs $700. We'll remember that for later. Let's go looking for our PPF data here. PPF or, or PPE, the efficiency data. So we're looking for data with a micromole or a micromole per watt or micromole per J. And we see that here, 2.5, they just call U moles per J. If it's per J, that's per joule or per watt, that's the same efficiency rating. So we could use this 2.5. If you look deeper into the page, it provides some other things. Um, PAR maps. These are PPFD numbers, and this is just a measure of the density of photons at that specific point where it was measured. It's not a measurement of the, the total number of photons striking the canopy. It's just the density of photons striking that point. Now, a lot of, of manufacturers only release PPFD numbers, and you can't use those in the calculator. They don't describe the quantity of photons from the light. They only describe the quantity that hit wherever the sensor happened to be. But Cresser's a good company and they provide good data. So if you come down here, you can see a PPF of 1492. And again, they give you that PPF per watt and they call it U moles per J, um, sort of betraying the fact that that's the same thing of 2.5 again. So this is 600 watts. We have 2.5 or 1492. We'll see how both of those come out in the calculator. And it was a $700 fixture. All right, so let's come back to our calculator here and we'll enter that data. We had 600 watts. It costs $700. And let's go ahead. You can enter our data in either of these fields and the other one will automatically calculate. So they said 2.5. If, if we enter 2.5, that calculates it at 1500. They said 1492. If we entered 1492 there, that would calculate it at 2.49. So the difference there is just a result of them probably measuring this with the 598 watts instead of 600 watts, but the numbers are close enough that we can see the relationship among them. So we'll go with the 1492 number and say that that's a calculated value. That means that our estimated usable PPF is actually going to be 1094. Our photon efficiency isn't 2.49. We would calculate that to be 1.82. Uh, a good price at $700 of just 64 cents. This is a fixture that can cover 16, 17 square feet, a uh, four by four tent with no problem really whatsoever, and produce up to 820 grams. So I'm gonna add this and I'll show you a, another little feature of our calculator. I'll add this to the compare table. We're gonna call this the Cresser with calculated data that we entered. So I'm going to enter that and it tells me that it's been entered to the table below and you'll see we have this grow light comparison table where 
it saves the most relevant information about that fixture. Now it doesn't give me the, the total cost information here because I didn't enter my grow space first. So I'm going to go ahead and say I have a four by eight grow space and I have 32 square feet. So this is going to tell me I need 2,080 um, micromoles of usable PPF. So the next time I add a, a fixture to this, it will show me the total cost and the number of fixtures needed for that space. So enter your grow space information before you add fixtures to the compare table. Now, what's interesting, I wanted to show you this. So that was the Cresser with calculated data. If we go back to the, the Grow Light Depot website here, you will see here that there's a spec sheet. A spec sheet usually will give us measured data. And I've been calling these calculated data. I know this because the chip that they use, the LED diode, gets a published efficiency of 2.5 micromoles. So when they're saying that they get 2.5 micromoles per joule and saying it's 600 watts to get to this 1500 or 1492, that's all just calculated based on the efficiency of the diodes. When we look at their spec sheet, and you'll pull this up, you'll notice different numbers. Over here, they're saying the same fixture. Over here, they're saying the PPF output is 1302, not 1492. And they're saying the efficacy is 2.1 micromoles. Now, both of these numbers are considerably lower than the values on this other page where they're saying 1492 and 2.5. So if we use these numbers, we're going to assume these numbers are from a, a test, a laboratory test, where they went and used total PPF, not a calculated PPF. So they did integrated sphere testing. So we'll do integrated sphere testing here, 600 watts, and still cost $700. But now we're going to enter 1302. All right. When we do it that way, we end up showing 1127 as the estimated usable PPF. And let's add this to the compare table as the Cresser with total data. And let's Let's see, this is what our calculator is trying to do. So regardless of sort of where you're getting your data from, we're trying to create a usable PPF number that's going to be equivalent. And you'll see they're not the same. There's a little bit of a difference. When we use the total data, we calculate the usable PPF at 1127 based on their um, calculated data, we're getting a, a usable PPF of 1094. But these numbers are much closer together and much more a sort of accurate reflection of what you could actually get from this fixture than their numbers of, you know, 1492 or 13 something and their efficiencies of 2.1 or 2.5. When we think about it in terms of usable PPF, and this is what our formulas behind the scenes do for us in this grow like calculator. So they try to bring everything down into a comparable value. So whether we use the calculated values or the total values, you're not going to get exact, but we tried to set up these algorithms so you would get it close enough to be able to make fair comparisons. And since I entered the space information before adding this one to the chart here, you can see it's going to tell me for my four by eight grow space, I'm going to need almost two of these and it'll give me the price for the two of them. If you have number of fixtures here that each require sort of different number of fixtures, let's see, I'll give you an example of that. If I said I wanted to use the Mars Hydro at $130 per unit, if I add this to the compare table now, all right, let's see. So now it's telling me I would need nine of those fixtures, but it would only cost $1,170 for those nine, as opposed to $1,400 for the two of the Cressors. So make sure that you're using the correct PPF. 
and you know try to find that PPF data not the PPFD data from the manufacturers finally before sort of signing off here I'll just show you our test results page so since this Mars Hydro TS1000 is actually a fixture that we've tested if you're looking at those in our calculators you'll have a direct link to our test results page and just I'll preview this quickly there's a video of the test here's all your most relevant information about the fixture here's our par map our par data you can again enter your growth space to figure out how many you need we have a complete written up review shopping links and all of the rest so you can keep looking through our new grow light guide i hope you guys enjoy our grow light calculator i hope it provides a good way to analyze and compare different grow light fixtures fairly and uh, this has been dr mj coco for coco for cannabis sending grower love to all of you